Welcome back, y'all, to Cross Politic. We got Indy Wilson, Indy Wilson, in the studio with us today. This segment is brought to you by H2O. Because we got fires all around us. Because it's smoky out there. Yes. It's uh, smoky out there. We're out at uh, Gabe's home studio. Sure. With, that sounds uh, cool. Home studio. That sounds really <laughs> cool. <laughs> with Indy Wilson in the house. And, I feel um, real chill right now. We're, and I'm not even drinking. Which we're is, we're effemication out, out here. <laughs> what? We're effemicating out here. Whatever. <laughs> effectuating. <laughs> effectuating. There we go. You're looking for effectuating. Yeah, you scared Gabe. me just now. Gabe. Gabriel. Oh. This is a family uh, this is a family show game. That was bad enough. I go, yeah. Gabrielle. Yeah. <laughs> Love. You know, you know bo- both y'all only only hear her out of one ear. That is true. Do you know that? Just, I, just, uh, the difference is I'm, I'm like Lady Gaga. I was born this way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whereas I was handcrafted. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. What? I wasn't handcrafted. <laughs> Psalm 139. But what? what? In the womb, like yes. That? I was presuppositionally handcrafted. <laughs> I, I was. I was whittled. <laughs> Which ear is it for you? It's the um, um, left ear. Right. My ear. left ear is dead. Yours mm-hmm. is. Um, my right ear is dead. Right ear. So okay. what I want to know, Gabe, is does your right ear scream at you? Um, no. You have no false noise. No, it's. I just have a constant fire alarm in my my left ear. Really? really? So it's not really deaf. It doesn't think it is. It's constantly inputting the panic signal. Something's wrong. Something's yeah, wrong. Something's like, wrong. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's just, shut up. It, so you actually hear something. Oh yeah. It, it's yeah. It, but it's just. But it's nothing. White noise. Clear. So have you ever heard of tinnitus? Like it's just any kind of ringing in oh, your ear. Okay. Ringing. Um. But that's like it's like that, but on steroids. Oh. So, wow. Ouch. I'm practicing going zen all the time. Right. Like just, so that's why you're so chill. That, okay. Just you gotta, like, relax and not worry about the fire alarm in your left ear. And, uh, and how did you go deaf in that ear? Oh, at the hands of a surgeon named Dr. Friedman in L.A. Friedman? Uh, yeah, Dr. Friedman down in L.A. And he... Uh, he you had a tumor. Sliced mm-hmm. my acoustic mm-hmm. nerve with a blade <laughs> or a laser. That's how I went deaf in that ear. Wow. Yeah. wow. I actually don't know if it was steel or light that did it. But, yeah, I had a... Rare tumor in my acoustic canal, the size of an egg, that was going to eventually kill me. It was killing me softly. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, they went in there and said, Fujis. Mm hmm. But even bef- <laughs> before the Fujis. Oh, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're going I'm farther going, back. I'm going pre Fujis <laughs> at that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was in there and it actually started it. It showed up as the screaming in my ear. Okay. So and that's, that's, that's when, what first started. That was the first trigger. Ear. My ear, my actual hearing turned off. And the screaming started, and so then that was heard, like a year ago, or that what? was close. So that was November. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's when that first happened, and I'm four months post op now. So yeah, you're still exciting. figuring this out a little bit, then, huh? Yeah, they tell me it's a full year before you know what you're going to be. Okay. So wow. See, my my story was um, very similar to Nate's, but not really. I was <laughs> in that it's related to his ear. In that it's related Does it have something to, his ear. to do with Texas? I was uh, no, no, but it, I mean, I was born in Texas. So <laughs> didn't notice. I was I was born with a with a deaf ear, but I didn't find out till I was like ten or eleven years old. And and I mean, this this could maybe indicate that I might have been like retarded a little bit when I was younger. Uh, there's only several, when he was young. Only when I was young. <laughs> it went away. It went away. It wore off around ten or eleven. Don't do that. Don't do that. The jokes are coming. Don't do it. It went away. I literally there was um uh I mean I did I had no clue that I was deaf in this ear. I I remember answering the phone with my bad ear, <laughs> like picked up the phone and nobody answered there. it. Nobody's there and I'm sitting there. Hello, hello, and, I, and, and, I, and I'm like, all right, can't hear you. You know, hang up. <laughs> <laughs> bad, bad connection is one of those bad landline connections back in the day. <laughs> oh man! And then oh, literally, it. like 15 seconds later, they call back, and I don't know what had happened, but I'd switched hands. I was holding something, and I picked up with my other hand, and I answered with my good ear, uh, and I answered just like nothing had happened, and I had, like, no, oh, I had no clue. It's just a bad connection, <laughs> and uh, and then finally, which was true. It was a bad connection. It was. <laughs> it was we just didn't know where it was with my ear, right? And um, uh, and and so one one Sunday school class were were playing a game and you know you whisper in the ear and you whisper in the next person's ear you whisper in the next person's ear the teacher started with me and she whispered in my bad ear and i'm like i can't hear very well in that ear today that was, that was my response i was like I, you know do this one and then after class she told my mom she's like gabe said he couldn't hear very well in his ear and, and then um that's when, Ever. I, that's when i went to the studio <laughs> and we found out that i was like i had a, a an undeveloped nerve that never um developed so there well, you go my deaf ear you know that's you know it's hard for me to laugh at some of this because for me, my ears are my work. So yeah. 
you know, you're, you're talking about like you're noticing this humming happening in your oh, ear. Oh, it sucked. It scares me to death to wake up and like, oh my goodness, what's happening? Because that's how I make my living is yeah. through mixing and audio. And, and right. so to do something like that, it's like, Lord, what are you doing to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was not pleasant. And uh, now I'm in mono instead of stereo, but it's a, um, hmm. it's, it was weird because it was in a business meeting and Gabe's brother was to my left and he asked me to pray for the lunch. And all I heard was like this, whoa, 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 like come from over there. Oh, wow. And it just turned off. The, the ear just turned off in the middle of the meeting. Wow. Right. And there. I looked at him and just the screaming started just like just mm. high pitched went in my ear. So yeah, I started trying to track that down mostly because the, the panic I felt was, like if I don't know what caused this, I might lose the other one. Yeah, like yeah. Right. Exactly. Now, now that I'm down right. to one, right? Yeah. So or a leg. I actually was <laughs> weird, weirdly on that regard. I was a little bit grateful when somebody called me and said, "Um, you have a brain tumor." Oh, it's like, oh. And I thought, oh, good, good <laughs> <laughs> relief. <laughs> I'll get, I get to keep my other ear, right? You know, it's like I'm not, yeah. I'm not needing to go take an ASL class right now and start learning sign language. Right. Yeah. So, so you wrote a book a few years ago called death by living. Probably when the tumor started growing. Uh, you know, I had it when I wrote it. Wow. Yeah. They yeah. said I probably had it for about 10 years, which is my entire writing career. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. So really 10 years, eight to 10. Yeah. The size it was, it had gotten quite large. So wow. They, well, you got to start before death by living notes for the tilt world. Right. So, oh, okay. I got, I got to start there but only because, Notes from a Tilted World. I was in I was in seminary when I read that book, and it was one of the books where, you know, you go to seminary, you're getting all this knowledge. You're like, yay, I know theology, I'm on top of the world, and then all of a sudden, Notes from a Tilted World, boom! But you don't know theology, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, you're not tasting this thing, like you're not living in this thing. And Notes from a Tilted World just made me stop for a second and start biting and eating the theology that I'm that I'm reading every day, and really. Uh, understand how practical it really is. And sometimes in seminary, I think we lose just how tangible uh, the, the God that we're studying is. And so oh. notes from a tilted world kind of just smacked me in the face and said, man, you need to taste and see of the Lord. That was the first book that kind of led me to like death by living was kind of like the sequel to that for me. You yeah. know what so, I mean? so what, so describe notes from a tilted world for our listeners. Uh, notes from the tilted world is a manifesto of faith, basically. Mm. And the reason why I wrote it at all was because I was being successful in the, you know, the New York publishing world and people around the country were acting like I had this skeleton in my closet called Christianity oh. and they were, they were, <laughs> you struggling. were hiding it in a yeah. cupboards. Yes. We know it was. Yes. In, in, in the cupboards trilogy and in Lee Pike Ridge, like people were sort of picking up like, wait a second. There's a Jesus in here somewhere. There's a chapter, <laughs> there's a chapter called Easter. And I remember getting off of a stage in New York once and this woman came running up, just cursing at me as I was coming down the steps and she had, she looked like a member of the other team. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, the tattoos and the, the, the dyed hair and all the piercings. And she was also slinging F bombs at me as I was coming. My editor kind of jumped, oh, nice. tried to jump in between us. Like what's going on here? Uh, it turned out that she had actually written a review of Lee Pike Ridge. She was a critic and she'd given me this like great review, this you know, <laughs> soaring positive <laughs> review. And then she said she woke up days later. And realized I'd pulled off that C.S. Lewis beep, you know, just, oh, and okay. she just went off. And so I told her, it's like, you know, it wasn't a secret. You know, the <laughs> chapter was called Easter right. at the end. You know, he comes out of the grave and, yeah. you know, I did, right. I wasn't trying to be sneaky. Right. And, um, yeah, she went but off. You had, but you had tricked her. Yes. At least it didn't work. And I, then I was snarky at her because she said, she had said she woke up three days later and I said, you said three days? Three? <laughs> <laughs> like Jonah? And then, like she, a yes. <laughs> and then she, she went off a little bit more. But, um, basically what ended up happening is Random House asked me to write a statement of faith, mm. which is Random funny. House did? Yeah. Weird. And they said, could we have, we're hearing <laughs> so pleasure. much. Wow. We are getting so many concerted complaints pushed from, the the hard left the sexual left yeah is probably the best way to describe it do, do you know what this guy thinks do you really know just like yeah really going at random house to drop me and be done with me and stop promoting me and they had a form letter even being sent out by one librarian at a university that she was sending out to every critic every reviewer anybody who said anything good about me she was sending out this form letter on mm -hmm. how i abused my wife and i mean it was bad like we wow. could have sued her but we didn't whoa but anyway, Random House had a statement of faith that I wrote for them, which was their auto reply. 
So Random House began distributing my statement of faith back out to these people saying, like, this is... Random House is helping evangelize <laughs> the world. Yeah. But it was just an answer. Like, you... you they, cause they would say the most absurd things that I believed. Like, did you know he thinks? And they'd say, actually, this is what he thinks. And they'd send it out. Right. And that made me think, okay, I need to actually write mm. my statement of faith, really. Yeah. Um, notes, which became Notes from the Tilted World. And that was a book I had always planned on writing. And I had planned on writing sort of in middle age. Like, I'm going to do this, you know, I'm going to do this novel stuff. I'm chasing yeah, yeah. these novels. Then, then I'll yeah. write this. God said now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. God said now. So I thought, you know what? I just need to stop running and like lean into it and yell boo. You yeah. know, like I'm not pretending like I'm not a Christian. I'm not trying to be sneaky. Yeah. So I wrote notes from the tilt world. And the goal, um, as far as. That's Thomas Nelson. Wasn't yeah. It? Notes, notes Thomas Nelson. Yeah, yeah. So my manifesto of faith. And the goal is just to push people to actually mean what they say. Yeah. To live what they say. So if you believe the world is created ex nihilo, then mean it. Yeah. What does that actually mean? What does that mean to how you go through your day, how how wide your eyes are when you hear God speaking? You know, I can't tell you how many times through various evangelical circles I heard people talk about how God's no longer speaking. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And that's such a joke. Yeah. And it's like, are you still here? Then he's still talking. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like this world is held from nothing, you know, into, into reality by his voice, by the power of his voice. Yeah. That's the miracle of creation. So mm. I started with just ex nihilo creation and then pushed all the way through, you know, what does that, just that mean to every aspect of our lives? So that gets into the gospel and everything else. I sent it in probably like three in the morning. I sent it off to the publisher. I was writing in my, in my bedroom. My wife just sort of woke up as I clicked send <laughs> and looked at me and said, you know, are you done? Like, yes, I sent it off. And she said, how do you feel? And I said, I feel like I just streaked through a mega church. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I just, like just, this is, this is going off. And now, now for the first time I'm writing in the specifically. Sorry, the visual. <laughs> just, just like, we all stopped looking at Nate. Yeah. <laughs> just like pushed in the doors and just ran through the sanctuary. And <laughs> yeah, this, it ran out the back. Like, yeah. I just felt like I went right through. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was the first time I'd actually ever stepped into the. Uh, I don't know, you could say the gospel industrial complex or any, like just uh -huh. into yeah. contemporary Christian publishing, anything. I hadn't yeah. done anything in the faith market. Right. Like right. as right. so just so described. So well, what's I'd, what's the reception been? Um it was banned from Lifeway. Yep. Tilt War was? Oh yeah, yeah, they wouldn't carry it. What for? Uh what am I allowed dude, it's to, Lifeway. Am I allowed to cuss? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, because of the word shitstorm. In the, in the, I yeah, use yeah. the word shitstorm. And that's the show Baraka, the problem. We, we inter yeah. interviewed show Baraka, and okay. he got his new See, album banned for yeah. saying penis. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. I emailed him and told him he wasn't cool because I got banned first. <laughs> 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 and I also told him that he was banned for a completely egregious use of the word penis, where my was an entirely justified use of the word shitstorm. <laughs> 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 but but uh, so Thomas Nelson begged me to remove the word. I wouldn't because Lifeway said they wouldn't carry it. Uh -huh. um, I had included a number of other things I knew that the the publisher wouldn't like, but I had included them so that I could take them out, you know, uh -huh. so that I yep. could work yeah. with them. So I I took out like seventeen things, but that was that was the <laughs> one thing I was yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was not going to let go of that because I was describing you know, a materialistic, atheistic worldview. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like, what is it out there? You look at the universe, if it's chaos, if it's all an accident, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. right. So right. I, I didn't want to use it frivolously. It's like, especially in a, you know, in a Christian book and Christian bookstores. But despite that, it uh, became very, very popular. It's had a really strong following yeah. um, since right. it was published. And you created a CD no, <laughs> right, a yeah, there's a, around there's it, a DVD which has helped a lot. That a book a beautiful DVD, and yep. that thing uh, has outsold the book. Yeah, no so, right. Which is yeah, so it the DVD has gone, you know, all sorts of places. The book didn't reach. There's a lot of people. I mean, Campus Crusade bought, bought yeah, they bought a lot, thousands and thousands yep. of them to give away to freshmen, wow. and um, so that was great. But then notes from the Tilt World was still very philosophical, big picture. It was personal, like mean it. But I wanted to talk about life and relationships, your place in time where you come from, your history, and the fact that you are creating history for other people right now. And so that became Death by Living. The follow-up book was and so basically the, all the that stuff. The two are connected. Yeah, they are. Where it's like, one's more Google Earth, you know, <laughs> where it's like it's high level, but it zooms into very specific moments, and Death mm -hmm. by Living is more personal. 
mm. Google so, Maps. Yeah, I think I think one of the reasons <laughs> too the DVD did so well was that is right around the era where Numa videos from um, uh, Rob Bell. Yeah. We're just f- starting to fall off. Like, I think he's a heretic. I think he's a bad like, guy. Wait a second. Why yeah. is he always walking in place? Yeah. <laughs> who's, who's holding the fan? <laughs> Why is his hair blowing? Yeah. After a while, yeah, people were pretty done with him. And then Death by Living was just like a perfect... Because it seems like the evangelical world is scared of uh, stories. They're scared of, of anything that's not uh, explicit exegetical teaching. And so Rob Bell had kind of opened up to the people who were somewhat artistic. And say, oh, finally, we can give visuals to the things that we believe. Finally, a Christian who doesn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> As if we've been but, short on those. Yeah. <laughs> but we realized that. Yeah. <laughs> I think people were a little late. Like, come on, guys. But um, notes from a Tilted World were really kind of the beauty of text and imagery kind of combined so that people can say, oh, good, something with solid theology and it looks beautiful. So I think, of course, that's why it blew up. It was filling that gap that really and still a lot of people haven't filled that gap. Yeah, it's there's actually hard. there's been a number. It's. In a, in a very real way, Notes from the Tilted World, the book, created a little sub-genre of Christian writing. When I wrote it, and they tried to take it out, bookstores didn't know where to put it. Mm-hmm. And and since then, there have been many, you know, there are many attempts to kind of do something similar. Some of them are great. Some of them are, they want to do it because they don't want to believe what I believe. I'm a very, <laughs> right, like, straight yeah. up, the Bible yeah. is the Bible. This is the Word of God guy, and they want to do you know, something that's a little more, you know, but it's coming from the guys who say that they're very Bible. You know, it's coming from the guys who say we're on Bible only, but that's just too much Bible, Nate. Like that's just, you know what I mean? You know, people don't mean that they say, it's it's just like, it's just like everything else. So you say the world was created from nothing by speech, but do you really actually think that and mean that in, in your everyday life? Do you receive the things around you as if they were spoken by God? Really? Not usually. No. Right. Then you have the people who are the most anti, for example, all my other books, fantasy, anything with monsters or magic, <laughs> also are the people, like the people who are really, really anti my fantasy novels are all Bible, 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 Bible. And it's like, do yeah. you know the first wizard duel was Moses in the in the court of Pharaoh? <gasps> that, that's like, right. Yeah, yeah. Where do you think you call it a wizard yeah. duel? <laughs> where do you think Gandalf came from? <laughs> where, do you, like, where do you think the ideas for the old man with the big beard and the staff, the magical yeah. staff, came from? You know, like it's if you believe the Bible, you believe in fantasy. Yeah. Capital no. F.